Hello, my name is Lowell, pronouns he, him, and we are playing our session zero of Girl by Moonlight on a Sea of Stars. I'm going to talk about what that is and what that involved here in a moment. Uh, but know that this session is part of uh, Open Hearth Gaming Community, which is an online gaming club, group, community that you can find out more about at openhearthgaming.com. Uh, we have a Patreon that supports it, and we have a lot of games happening each week uh, that that you'll see lots of videos for. You can follow our channel. I believe, if I read Rob Abrazado's note right, we hit our 5,000th video uh, uh, for for the, the collection of, of AP videos. I, I'm pretty sure that's what he said. Uh, there's a lot of them. Uh, uh, the work of of dozens of GMs over the years. Uh, so that's worth checking out. We have an open gaming convention that is called The Shared Hearth. That's a weekend, a Friday through Sunday, where GMs from the community are running games. People can sign up and play in these. You don't have to be a, a Patreon supporter or anything like that. You can come and try them. Right now, we've got about a dozen and a half games on the calendar, we're expecting to add more signups for that. will open on Tuesday, October 24th at noon U.S. Eastern. I will have a link to our website and to the shared hearth material in the show notes. So you can check that out if you were at all interested. We've got got the from, from OSR to, to PPTA and, and all over the board in, in that. So we are playing... As I said, Girl by Moonlight, uh, On a Sea of Stars. I am anxiously awaiting the arrival of the physical book, but I have printed out lots of the pages of this. Uh, we are using a Google uh, uh, spreadsheets as our keepers who may hear us referring to that. I'm going to walk through what this game is about. In a way, uh, I'm going to focus on kind of quoting from the text itself. Uh, so the pitch that it gives uh, in the book is that this is about institutions and hope in the face of extinction. Uh, you are captive heroes. You are young people forced to fight a slowly losing war against an overwhelming enemy. And we'll get to define what that enemy is and how it looks here in our series creation stage. Uh even as you're doing that, you're being alienated from, from the people that you love, from the society that's pushing you to do this. Uh, you have these engines, which are living mecha uh, that you bond with, and they're the only way to fight these leviathans. Uh, and it's only your emotions and your transcendent powers that can connect with these uh, uh, engines. Uh, it's a very striking setup. Uh, I'll I'll read to you as well, because I think this is worth going over what the GM's agenda is for this game a little bit. So the series agenda for this is that, first of all, we've got this bastion. This is the, the final city, the thing that you are, are defending. We'll talk about that. They call it the last bastion as well. It's a place where the last remnants of humanity live and where you get your orders from. And we may see it on screen at a certain point. But the inst the institutions of the Bastion are also mon monstrous. Uh, while the Leviathans seek to destroy Bastion from outside, the institutions of the Bastions are rotting from within. Uh, if ever the Leviathans are contained or under control, we bring institutional pressure to bear on our characters. Uh Second is we're going to give the engines huge emotional landscapes. They are not simply machines that do exactly as the pilots direct them to. They are sentient beings with emotions at once familiar and vastly alien. Uh, the engines likely cannot communicate directly, uh, but their hearts are an immense weight on our protagonists. Uh, and the last thing is that the Leviathans, the things that you're fighting, are fundamentally alien. Uh, their goals and methods are strange and ultimately unknowable. So those are the guidance that is given to me as the GM. So I've mentioned the Bastion 
as the, the last place of humanity that you are working to defend, uh, there is uh, also a fortress. This is our space fortress, our ship that you'll be traveling on that has uh, the, the docks for the engines. It is kind of our crew sheet in that you get to pick things on it. We track things there. That's where a lot of what is going on is going to happen. This is a military spaceship. Uh, you are military pilots in this. So there's going to be certain kinds of control and overwatch and things. We're going to talk about how that works in the course of play. Uh, the Leviathans themselves, as I say, are monstrous and alien. And there's a suggestion, maybe, maybe specifically about them, that it's kind of our fault that the Leviathans are out there. But, but there's some implications on that. But that's the setup. This is a Force in the Dark game. We've all uh, played Force in the Dark before. We did did a, a big, long series of Mountain Home. There are some changes with this one, particularly how stress is handled, uh, particularly uh, how uh, downtime actions work, the idea that our characters can go into Eclipse uh, uh, and go into Transcendence. There's some mechanical features with that that uh, up here as well. The other big feature of this is that your characters suck. Uh, oh, this is uh, a, a thing that we, we noted. One of the things about Force of the Dark is uh, your actual dots and abilities can, can matter a lot. And our characters will have very few dots. Uh, they will start out with very few. Now, mind you, there are fewer abilities, so you don't need to necessarily spread it, spread as much, but but it's still it's still a thing. It means that supporting, pushing, pulling on all that stuff, uh, taking devil's bargain, setting things up, all of that is going to be really, really important. Now, stress, personal stress, unless you've kind of gone into eclipse, does clear during downtime, and that's great. Uh but there are other things that are going to eat up your your, your time, like uh, repairing damage done to your engines and things. So there's an interesting set of dynamic, dynamics. We're going to see how this plays out, given what we know about Forged and how we have, have played it before. As with uh, most of the time that I've run Forged in the Dark, our default is going to be uh, standard effect, risky positioning. That's that's if we don't say anything, if we don't change that up, if we don't establish that, that's the baseline that we're working from. Uh, and that's the baseline that you can shift it up and down. You can use other things to do that. We don't have devil's bargains. We have poisoned promises uh, here, uh, uh, which uh, is is still that same thing. Uh, but that's another way to to get a, a, a die here. Uh, it reflects the, the general tone uh, of the game, uh, uh, so we're going to learn how to how to 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 get along with these mechanics here uh, together. So uh, that's sort of the the set the big big concept picture. Uh, the next is approach. What are we going to be doing today? This is our session zero. So we're going to be building our series with our series sheet. One of the things that means is uh, everyone. Uh, I put a link on the Lines and Veils tab to the play sheets, you may want to look at those uh, because they have some of the, the like suggested pick lists for some of the things we're gonna talk about. Uh, you're welcome to choose anything, but those are a nice uh, guideline that aren't uh, 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 easily present in the actual sheet that we've got here uh, uh, in the, the character keeper. So the options are present there uh, that will, uh, I think will make it a little bit easier when we go to that process. Uh, so we're going to go through that and we'll see where we get to on time. Of course, we're going to take breaks. We may do a chance to do some character interactions or things at the end, but we'll see where we are uh, uh, with that. Uh, tone. Uh, I do think that anime is our, our touchstone, uh, but this is, I think, uh, a... It's a it's a teen plus. It's a, a PG thirteen uh, version. Uh, bad things happen to characters. 
bad things happen to NPCs. Um, uh, I don't, it's not Evangelion dark because nothing is, uh, uh, but, but, but definitely as if you've, if you've seen some of the more tense mecha anime, uh, we mentioned Escaflone before the, the video started, Razafon, these are all ones where there's, there's a, a, a lot of things pulling our characters in different directions. Uh, so that's our, our general tone that we're going to aim for. But in terms of how we're going to set the limits on that, of course, we're using a layered set of safety tools. So I know you all played with me before. You're all familiar with this. We have our lines, basically things that are definitely off the table in terms of play, topics that we don't want to consider, don't want to have on scene, veils for anything that if it happens, it's either off screen or it fades to black or it's alighted to. And then ask first for anything that we definitely want to have a check in before we we do that. So uh, we have that as kind of our baselines. That's a living document. Uh, I've got example lists there, but if you want to add something else, please feel free to to do that. Uh, and if later on you decide that there's something you want to to add to it, uh, you know, you're also welcome to. Uh, we have a romance matrix there for people who, uh, if you're interested in in romance with PCs, with NPCs, if that's an interesting plot point for you to, to mark that out uh, there. Uh, so we'll know where we're at. Uh, the next thing is the X card. We, we all know uh, the, the gesture or saying X card. Uh, X card comes in very, for me, sort of two flavors. One is marking where we've hit something that is objectionable, that is problematic. Uh, the, that time when we just want to stop something that is coming up uh you don't have to explain or defend your choice uh the only thing we're going to ask you is like maybe how far back we need to cut on on that you can explain your choice if you want but you never require to and you never have to to defend it from from anyone there's no pushback on that the second kind of thing with x card is x card is also a tool for us to mark when maybe we need to stop to recalibrate Maybe play has gotten too heightened or uh, uh, maybe people are stepping on each other's toes or, uh, and again, I always have to point back to Tyler using the X card for this that really made me realize that it's a great way if we're starting to lean in, we're starting to hit on things that are under our lines and veils and maybe we haven't realized it yet. X card's a great place for it to go, okay, wait, let's stop, let's recalibrate where we're at, let's readjust where the situation is. Uh, so I think that's really important. The last thing is open door. If you need to step away for whatever reason, uh, uh, personal, emotional, uh, Amazon at the door. Uh, uh, these are all reasons to to step away. It'd be great if you could tell us that you'll be right back or not, but you're not obligated to. So basically, you feel free. Uh, and, and with that, uh, uh, luckily, I haven't had this very often. Uh, it has happened. Uh, but if we get to the end of a, a, a session or uh, this session or even later sessions and you're like, this is not the game I thought it was, or this is not a game I want to be playing, uh, then feel free to to just like send a note, say, hey, I don't think I'm coming back. Again, don't have to defend those choices. Never have to defend your use of safety tools. So those things are all out there in the in the ether. That's our 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 cat's document. Uh, anyone have any questions before I move on? Okay. So a lot of what we're going to do here today is this series sheet, which we're going to take a, a look at. Uh, we have a, a tab for that. I'm going to pull out uh, my copy of this. Uh, we're going to be asking some questions and we're going to be uh, having people answered. Now, uh, to keep this from being the, I'm going to throw this question out and anyone can answer it. And then we sit here for five minutes, the the slow heat death of gaming. Uh, uh, what I am going to do is I am going to move around and we're going to shift each time. I'm going to give somebody sort of like, I'm going to give you sort of first bite on this. Uh, and we'll kind of 
move around on that, but it's still going to be a chance for discussion on that. So the first person isn't necessarily setting what we're going to do, but uh, kind of starting that conversation off. So we know that we've got this last bastion, this city somewhere out there. We know we've got this spaceship. We've got these Leviathans. And we know that there is something that they're calling the void. This is this is space. This is the material, the uh, place that you are going out into, that you are exploring. And the question is, uh, what lurks in the void? Uh, and if you look at the series creation workspace sheet, you'll see that there are some uh, answers. So Sherry, uh, you get first chair on this one. I'm going to go uh, uh, sort of uh, Sherry, Ethan, Patrick, Tyler is going to be my order for today. Uh, so Sherry, uh, looking at the, the list of examples or something else that you want to decide on, uh, what what does lurk in the void? lurks in the void and you said that it's in that sheet right yes if you go to the series creations worksheet yes. uh it is in fact uh and the no, link it's, it's on the lanes and veils is the link to it right yes yes and I, I was actually there but then i closed it because that's my good trick absolutely all right, all right. now i'm rolling down the next thing I you need to do is everyone. open the roller and then shut yes, that and then shut that <laughs> I'm, it's I'm a there ritual. for it yes um, I am with you on that. Okay, so and you said about what page here? This is page 19. Really? Okay, now I got to do is find the page numbers on here. Ah, 19. Bless I you. apologize, everyone. This is and my thing. Just for, for my clarity as well, the void is like where the Leviathans come from, where our bad stuff comes from sort of idea that's the sense i have of it is that this is kind of in the in the space in the beyond that we were out in what what the universe is like to us right now oh oh oh, oh. i oh there's like yeah. a couple there, of really interesting ones okay yeah. there, there's a little so... bit of uh uh the uh the, what's the the necromancer space book patrick gideon the ninth yes there are yeah, some a, direct references direct references to, 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 to that and are to there, some other okay. things because because the first thing i saw is i was like oh a world of ghosts and demons looks like kind of fun um, okay so a world of ghosts and, and demons what would yeah, you i like the idea of it is that it's um it's like they're a strange mix of like all of the sort of cultural ideas of ghosts and demons, but they're all more complicated and like they have these dimensionalities to them that none of um, none of human description had ever gotten close to. But it's that thing of sometimes they kind of have that that form, those sorts of you know basic when they encroach in our world actions and abilities. But in the void, they are. They are, yeah. are bigger, manifest, unfolded. Okay. Yes, exactly. Uh, so. Other folks' thoughts on that? Are you are you good with that? Anything you'd like to add to that description? That's that's interesting. So you're saying like the the world of ghosts and demons? That sort of like really scary bit has a harder time manifesting or isn't as strong like where people are it, it isn't as uh, strong when you're not in the void so it's gotcha. the void is their place is their home oh gotcha gotcha that makes so sense. sort of like a veil like this side and that side it's it it is but i think it was a veil and this side that side but now the side isn't so clear gillianated it's broken and torn and and cool. there's encroachments like that is kind of one of so cool. if these beings have a like an existence in the higher dimensions what we're seeing is kind of their manifestation down here as they kind of come through the veil or how mm -hmm. and uh, maybe they don't exactly look like this but maybe this is how our brains are 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 interpreting them but we've got it quite wrong about mm -hmm. what they are 
Okay. Mm -hmm. But your reaction to it is that reaction of whenever you get that, that sort of thing of that something is creepy and supernatural is like, there's always that reaction to it. Okay. Um, yeah, I thought looking at it also the um, ancient gods reawoken. Could we maybe play with the ghosts of the dead gods that have been consumed out there amongst the ghosts of the people as well? I like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's it, it's it's gods and monsters and ghosts out and there, ghosts. Uh, yeah. and and. And whatever we thought, whatever hope we might have had for these ancient gods, nope, uh, they already got it. Uh, that may be a question of what ate them, mm. uh, 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 these uh, space gods. The void ate them. Void ate them. Ethan, anything you'd like to add to that? Uh, no. no. Okay. Uh, so that gives us a sense. God and the boy, these are the dangerous parts of it. This is going to be our scenery kind of backdrop to this. The next thing is this question is what act of hubris brought doom upon us? One of the things that we're doing as we're doing this is uh, this is building up a kind of a picture of how much this is space fantasy, how much this is hard sci-fi, sci like we're kind of building the, the, the picture up from, from these pieces. Uh, so, uh, Ethan, what act of hubris? Um, yeah, I'm looking at these examples. Uh, or something else. Yeah, I'm uh, trying to think of like what would what what would uh, piss off <laughs> or attract, um, and and they, those could be equally bad uh, beings. Um, Uh, I think of which of these could be interesting to like. And the thing that, the thing that seems like it might be ongoing, uh, that might still have some bearing on like, like things that people might want to continue to do is casting signals across all realities. We have advertised our presence to yeah, exactly. a variety of, of, of realities. Uh, thoughts on that? You guys good with that or want to add some complexion to that, Patrick, Tyler, Sherry? That's interesting. That's sort of like a, like something new that we discovered and just like broadcast way through too much through we found this way to interact with different realities or multiverse or something like that and are you thinking it was like we intentionally sent out signals like welcome this is us sort of things or just like our playing with it has sent out all this noise that's attracting stuff I kind of like the second one, but I also like the idea that we are still using it. Like, yeah. like there is something we still we need to continue to do that also attracts these beings. How is about what I'm communicating going for with the dead? If we need to communicate with the dead, that would be great. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> then, like someone figured out that yes, the, you know, there's there's the souls, and when they aren't here in yeah, the like thing, something that we do that is so you can get. Yeah, it's so it's useful. like getting information and getting, uh, you know, maybe closure, those kinds of things. Like it started out for that. And... Right. I, 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 I also like the idea that that maybe that's, it's not just like communicating with the dead, that that all of our sort of 
interstellar communications and information is we'll is in that this. that like, that wavelength. We might have to to, yeah. to use the souls of the dead to as broadcast beacons. Mm. Oh, Lord, that is truly terrible. You know, because what else has contact with all possible um, realities? Death. Mm. <laughs> all right. So we definitely got a more wild metaphysical uh, uh, approach to to this. Uh, Even the stars themselves bow to death. Yeah. Uh, the next question is, Patrick, why do the Leviathans themselves come? What is driving them in particular? <laughs> I'd, I'd been looking at the list and I was like, oh, there's so many different ways it could go, but there is only one way it can go now. Um, because what I was thinking there when you were talking, Ethan, and, and the, the idea of like reaching across and harnessing death, like we have these great computers that are built off of like entang quantum entangling machines with the minds of dead gods. Like we're having these fantastically powerful and intuitive uh computing things because we are we are harnessing and draining and changing their dead minds something vast and and beyond what we could build ourselves so i think it's 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 a part of like to reclaim something we stole uh probably a part of like to silence our civilization I like that. Uh, Tyler, are you good with that? <laughs> uh, 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 and it says something about what computers and our ship might actually look like. Uh, you know, cyber cyber shrines uh, uh, that are, mm. are hooked up to do, uh, you know, prayer loops uh, of communication that generate power and information and, and calculations. Instead of putting prayers, you put in uh, algorithms uh, to get solutions out. Uh, What's the difference like... between a prayer and an algorithm, really? <laughs> and I like the idea of like you have different gods harnessed to different machines because like you would have a, a, a god of invention that would be like one sort of computer, but a god of war would be like a very different sort of machine or computer. Oh. Uh, and of course, because of of the the way that the quantum entanglements work, all of the computers that are using that are all kind of one computer uh, mm -hmm. across across dimensions. There, that sounds like proper nonsense. Yeah, it does. It's it's tr <laughs> truly bonkers. Uh, so Tyler, you get one of the most interesting choices to kind of start us out here. Uh, what form? do the Leviathans take? I think I'm going to <clears throat> alter slightly one of the words in here. Okay. From Cyclopean mechanical horrors to necropic mechanical horrors. Necropic mechanical horrors. Do you think that meaning like like a uh, biomechanical, like like uh, uh, I think it's you know where we're talking about the prayers and the pulling in and where does the prayers become science and all of that I think we're seeing these necrotic these things that are built on the dead and the ghosts and the, the that sort of thing and that is its processing and that is its uh, capabilities and that is its form uh, anyone want to add anything to the complexion on that? I like the idea of like they need something dead from this world to latch onto. I. What if they can also like? Okay, so we're we're using these dead gods' minds as processing power. What if they can take over our machines too? Hmm. Like there's a 
there's a tipping point in the meta spiritual sort of right, energy yeah. cycle there. That. Like, like our version of cybersecurity is keeping, like, keeping the valve that you know controls <laughs> or that that keeps them from like coming through and controlling uh, our spaceship that uses the processing like, power. Because I mean, you, yeah. you need like something the idea really of, big and powerful yeah. to need that, but like the sci-fi <laughs> idea of an AI going rampant, like breaking out mm -hmm. of all its, its controls and becoming something else. Right, but uh, like becoming it's... what it was originally. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, we have these the Leviathans have have sourced from some of these places where the machines have broken down, and yeah. then from flesh of the people nearby, uh, uh, and uh, uh, biomass on the things have formed, uh, uh, and. Uh, come together so i got a little bit of we have this idea of like we're the last little bit of whatever we were so there's a lot got to be lots of Falling civilization and tech and, out yeah. there yeah yeah uh uh maybe even alien civilizations uh that got went through the same process uh i, I like it. it has a oh, nice 40k what if the leviathans got... were named after like our lost colonies Ooh. oh oh I mean, what if they oh, are? Our and last that's colonies? one of the yeah. things. Yeah. When we're being attacked, we have to figure out where they've come from because it'll tell us something about their nature. Okay, but it's like, like our whole... our former homes and expansions yeah. come back to attack us. So that's one of the things we will we will figure out for your characters is is what what's the name of the mm. colony you came from that fell? Like mm. a zombie movie, but the zombie is a city. Yes. <laughs> so. I like the idea that these things maybe are like super multidimensional and stuff, but when they have to come and shut us down, they have to take a physical form. So this mm -hmm. is why we have these yeah, big okay. leviathans. Okay. Like okay. essentially they have to make that physical contact to take over what we're doing. Excellent. Uh, so that brings us to the questions about the last bastion of humanity this is the 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 place that we are defending place that is going to have a damage track uh uh through the the course of the game and as things happen uh it's going to take uh, uh some hits uh so uh, i swing back around to you sherry uh and the first question is uh where do we take shelter huh. says pick one or two do you want to pick one of those that you like and also feel free to add something else to it yeah and and just to make it clear because it was something that sort of took me a while to figure out we have the last bastion which is like on the ground a place where all the people live mm -hmm. and we have the flagship which is out there in space where we live and yeah. go fight the the aliens so so where do we take shelter has to be one of those two or is something separate so this is the last bastion of humanity this is what okay. we're talking about the thing that's right. on the ground okay. where does humanity shelter where does humanity shelter Ooh, mm, 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 mm. Uh, really really think that inherently it has to be a mobile bunker of some sort like that's the other thing is part of it is the scenery has to change from time to time okay okay uh i imagine that that like it's in a place and then moves through space to another place like like a uh like a and every once in a while teleport or are you imagining that this is mobile on the ground of a of a last planet kind of thing oh that's interesting uh i think i think it's part of what the computing is doing is always calculating the next safe place so it's a very battlestar galactica the the this the the last bastion can't really fly easily to another place uh it is kind of building up power and calculation energy and those things to move again 
uh, uh, to to somewhere else, but but they are there in a place for 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 a time. Um, Does that sound reasonable else? to people? Oh. I don't. Does that sound, sound okay? Yeah, I, I, I like. Ah. We we talked about like that sort of multi dimensionality stuff. So that idea of like building up to a weird warping or jumping sort of thing. I, th I think that's cool. Okay. Anything else you want to add to that description, Ethan, of that? Do you want to pick another one of those traits from that, or are you good with that? Um, yeah, I, I like that idea. You know, okay. mobile, but only sporadically. <laughs> okay. So we have to kind of keep track of where it goes. We have to, to, to make our, our emotions through that. Um, Can I make a pitch please. here, kind of? on the physicality of it. Sure. Um, since we're getting into, a, I think, sounds like a really interesting space. Do we think that this is maybe like the torpored or comatose, the last of the gods that haven't gone on to die? It's our what? last connection, sort of, or the last one that sacrificed itself in a way to not go beyond it's just a thought i i kind of like I, that that was actually a thing that i had thought of before and i'd forgotten about it like like they're making inroads into our reality by taking over our abandoned and you know broken down civilizations basically what if we captured one from them <laughs> yeah Ooh. so we have pulled down and manifested the hyperdimensional body of one of their gods uh, to form uh, our our last base that can do this jump. That's so messed up. Yes. Mm. <laughs> it provides the link for all of our hyper weird calculations that yeah. can play back and forth. Ooh. Okay. And like, maybe it's still a little bit alive. Uh <laughs> unpredictable there are probably or some some not. people that that have to to, to work to, to to keep things from going wrong with it hmm. oh no i i assume that there's a bunch of people who have to be its attendants and all of those things where they're the ones that communicate with it in in the rules that they, we've had to learn on the fly yeah. and all of that <laughs> stuff rituals and processes and things that make no sense to us they 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 are our formulas and things that that seem absolutely alien but they are carried out by these these uh uh techno priests uh, yeah how long has have we lived on this thing has there like do we have an entire subculture dedicated to this i think we should say yeah. that that it has been around for a bit uh but it's only recently that the colonies have started to be destroyed and that the the fallback of of humanity uh oh, so, so that yeah. we can have in the time yeah. span that that you lived in other places this certainly fits yeah. for the something we've stolen that they're wanting to get back. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there's yeah. that too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, so, Ethan, I'm going to give you this one. Uh, what is held to be sacred? Like amongst us, amongst humanity as it remains now, what what is what is valued, what is sacred? I'm not sure this is exactly the right term for it, but boundaries. Um, because like the you know, apparently reality is sort of permeable. Uh, we can use the gods' minds. They can like that. I think it is extremely important to like prevent, I, I think it started out as it's extremely important to prevent them from taking over, you know, the place where you live, the, the machinery you use. Uh, and I think that has like permeated the culture. It is extremely important to be in control of your own mind. Like, have boundaries not necessarily boundaries physical boundaries but self-control like, yeah like that that idea that you mm -hmm. have to have that 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 people who can't can't control themselves are are 
uh, you know, right, uh, right. Uh, and people who are maybe like too, de- like, like codependence is a bad thing, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, like being self self reliant isn't quite because like nobody's truly self reliant on a spaceship, mm-hmm. but that kind of maybe that does that make sense? I, I, I like that. It certainly makes I like it that a lot where we've got that tension between cooperation and helping versus the individual and, and that the institutions want individuals not 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 cooperatives uh, and we're teenagers people so <laughs> self-control is not our right expertise. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh anything we want to add to that anybody uh, for the what's sacred okay uh that brings us to you patrick what was humanity forced to give up so that that boundaries idea um sort of led me to i i like the idea that we had to give up emotion not in the way of emotionlessness but that to hide in this god's self to become a part of it and to work with it like the people of bastion have to live with the overwhelming emotional waves coming off of this god and so those boundaries those preset rules of interaction and who owes what and how people should treat each other becomes so much more important when you're having to rely fully on the training of your conscious mind often ignoring the emotions that are like washing through you um so i think that's one and the other that hit me there um is is around that growth that idea that we found these technological meta-technological shortcuts Mm. in co-opting these dead gods but it means that our our progress and our progression as a civilization is like growing along the dead skeleton of something that was already there rather than becoming something that we could be on our own yeah we've 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 gotten the tools but we don't understand everything about them the principles of them and we probably aren't even thinking about that it's so far past us we're just focused Mm -hmm. on how do we keep using these correctly rather than figuring out what's the theory behind it what's the 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 theoretical we're 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 not theoretical physicists we're always applied physicists uh Mm -hmm. here okay uh i like that anything else anybody wants to add to that i i I love that i don't want to change anything i just want to kind of clarify where we're talking about emotion we still we still exhibit all of we're not like doing the vulcan logic thing It's more oh, of a how how are you seeing it? Like I said, I I don't think it's an emotionlessness thing. I think that that working with these working with and in the minds of these dead gods, especially the people of Bastion who are like living inside this semi-living god, that the emotions of the god are often more present in you than your own emotions would be. They sort of override mm. your emotions. When the when the sleeping god of Bastion is angry in its dreams, like everyone in Bastion is angry. Ooh, okay. So I we like have that. these regimented rules of interaction because you still have to have a reasonable society even when everyone's filled with rage for the week. Yeah. So we I have can't to ever like trust really... or react based on emotion. That, mm. Yeah, you have to think about okay, where yeah. is this coming from? Where is my? Where is me? And where is the external? Oh, and, I like. And, that. and I'd like to say that this isn't something that you feel on the ship, the flagship, but it is something that that you have experienced when you've been at Bastion, and when you return back again, you you get in contact with that that that. And the people that you're dealing with in Bastion are constantly dealing with that. Mm, that's cool. Yeah. Uh, Tyler, uh, we pilot the engines against the Leviathans. What separates us from the masses? What do you think uh, is 
is the 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 reason i think we're i think we're chosen by the engines but then we become we have to be changed by bastion that the there is the engine will choose someone and when you do you go and there is the ritual that takes place inside of bastion that, that makes you able to do the full connect and everything anything anybody is, wants is, to add to that is that sure. like getting like knighted by the the ancient god king a little bit and, and maybe there's a physical tell to it i i kind of like the idea that we we can't easily just slide back into the masses and them not recognize us i like the idea that there's there is a physical sign that uh, uh that you can figure out what it is that it's that it's unique and like you don't understand what it means nobody does because we don't yeah, understand there's got to the be some weird like hybridization alien dna sort of stuff going on okay um i like yeah, that I mean, it i it, it also hits me that that would make like your connection with an engine is sort of a smaller version of like the people's connection with Bastion yeah. because okay. they have this thing of the engine's impulses and vices sometimes drive you when you're driving it. So that sort of connection builds between you. I like that. Yeah. I, I like the idea that like, like these, these engines were not created by humans. This is, you know, some alien civilization and we've kind of learned how to use them. <laughs> that fits with everything but, like, we've done. Half of everything we do is just cargo cult nonsense. <laughs> you know, this is very much a metaphor for being a teenager. I just yep. want to give you all a big thumbs up on yeah. this because I love it. So the next thing is a question that I'm going to put to uh, each of you uh, to decide, and that they uh, you're going to tell us what role you play. Uh, you can choose one or two of these. Uh, roles, and if you want to come up with another one, these are are sort of tags or descriptors that we'll then use when we kind of come to the choice about uh, the playbooks here. Uh, so, Sherry, uh, what are a couple of roles that you think you want your character to play? Oh, my goodness. I I will always go for the naive idealist if given the opportunity. Um, and then... Let me have you hold on to that. Yeah, I'm going to do once around and then, and then we'll yeah. come around again. Okay, yeah. Uh, Ethan, what is a role that you think you want for your character? I'm kind of torn between rejected candidate and weary mechanic. Uh, I'm going to go with rejected candidate. Okay. Originally rejected and now. In the mix. Interesting. Something has changed. Uh, Patrick, what's the first role that you want to have for the, the tag here? Uh, I, again, something written there or something else? Hmm. I, I, it's it i think it it's something sort of obviously uh inappropriate to to the military to the structure sort of that we're under um maybe off of that mechanic one but not like a weary mechanic but like a a dreamer mechanic like someone who's focused outside of the the struggle and the immediacy like 
thinking about things for the future when we shouldn't be focused on that sort of stuff idea. Okay. Uh, 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 the the uh, the creative mechanic, the dream mechanic. Yeah, the, the, yeah. Uh, uh, I like that. Yeah. Tyler? Ethan, what did you choose? Uh, rejected candidate. And again, you can make up your own as well. Yeah. I think I'm... Forbidden lover. Ooh. Interesting. Sherry, if I swing back to you, do you want to put a, another tag with that, another descriptor? You are muted. I think you can get away with being a little naive if you're an ace pilot. Okay. So maybe I'll put those two together. All right. Ethan, uh, is there another descriptor from this list or elsewhere you want to add to that projected candidate picture? Um, civilian. After being rejected, I went and made a life for myself, and now <laughs> yeah. that's not. <laughs> so you might be a little bit older than the other teens. Had some a chance at, at uh, a life. I like that. Yeah, yeah. I was just about to graduate from college, you know, or something like yes. that, and it dragged me back here. <laughs> I was three days in retirement. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, Patrick, do you want to add another tag? should probably unmute though uh i'm torn um no I, I'm, i'll leave it there okay uh tyler I may have to come back once I see what yeah. the playbook is. Yeah, no, that that's absolutely. This is uh, intended to be a way to uh, have your uh, characters uh, have a sense of what you might want uh, in this. Uh, so we're going to take our first break. We're going to come back and we're going to talk about the playbooks because you're going to make your pick for your playbook and then we're going to do some more questions of of series building at that point uh so let's take 10 and we will come back so we're next going to go and have folks choose their playbook uh we have seven possible playbooks and they are the, the they are in our Character Keeper given uh, separate tabs uh, because that's one of the ways that you can do that with Forge in the Dark. Uh, so we have, and I'm just going to quickly go through this. Everybody, we have our Enigma. You say it's good for working with shadows uh, uh, and dramatic revelation and uh, play the Enigma if you want to be the center of attention. I've got the Guardian who's good at protecting others and caring for their friends. Uh, we've got the harmony, uh, which is, quote, two voices speaking as one, a beacon of hope. Uh, the harmony is the one that's actually good at understanding emotions and acting in concert with their allies, or this our support character in some ways. With the outsider, uh, they are a renegade. Uh, as much as you can be a renegade, in this military uh, situation, they have a troubled past and something to prove. Uh, they are good at direct confrontation and brash, reckless action. Uh, the stranger is good at calm evaluation and unconventional approaches, uh, uh, figuring things out. They're cold and distant. 
Uh, we have our time traveler who is a secretive oracle and dedicated friend. Uh, they are good at using flashbacks and prophesizing outcomes. Given all the hyperdimensionality, it does not surprise me that, that a time travel might be a possibility. Uh, and then we have the unlikely hero, an unproven prospect and heartfelt companion. They are good at making friends and getting in over their head. Uh, play the unlikely hero if you want to be the heart of the group. So, Tyler, do you have one that you are interested in or a short list of ones you're interested in? I think I have a fairly short list. We'll say okay. that. Um, stranger, time traveler, uh, but I could go for uh, outsider or unlikely hero. <laughs> let's, let's, let's put the two there. You've got that stranger and time go. traveler. We'll put those two, clearly your there two you first go. picks. Sherry, do you have a a singular pick or a short list of things that you want to play? Uh, I think I could do Guardian easily. Harmony, I could probably figure it out. Guardian, Harmony. Ethan, what about for you? Um, I think either Unlikely Hero or Outsider could work with what I have already said. So. Okay. Um, outsider now patrick i come to you and this makes for a tough set of of choices here because you maybe can start to to narrow it down do you have a strong sense of what you want to play i know you've looked at these playbooks before i have and and i came in with like three in mind but what we've set up has definitely narrowed me down to two okay um i i I think the Enigma is interesting, and I think the Stranger could be very interesting in our setup. Okay. So I'm, I'm still... Those are the, the, the two. So Tyler? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, see, I see you hesitate, Patrick. Were you going to say something else? No, no, no. I'm just saying I'm, I'm still trying to like find a, find a tipping point between those two. Okay. Tyler, you have the Stranger and the Time Traveler as the two that you are interested in. Uh, could I could I push you over the edge to to pick one or the other? I'll take the time traveler. Okay. Sherry, if I come back to you, Guardian or Harmony? I think Guardian would be crazy hard, so I'm gonna do that. Okay. Guardian. Uh Ethan. Um, I think I can make unlikely hero work. But. Okay, and then we come back to you, Patrick. Both of theirs are open. Which one do you want to lean into? I'm gonna be inspired by Sherry and go for the one that I think is harder. I feel like the stranger mechanic is more inside my comfort zone. So I'm going to go with the enigma and the secret identity. And I don't know how this is going to work exactly, but we are going to figure it out. Okay. So, uh, we have that set. We will come to building our characters in a bit. We're still kind of working on some series creation choices here. Uh, so, uh, how do they keep you in line? Uh, Sherry, what, going back to that, that series list of suggestions, uh, what do you think that is? I, I really think that propaganda and lies makes so much sense for teenagers. Propaganda. Anyone want to add anything to that? I mean, if you clue in that it would be drugs and addiction, but. Uh, I mean, I don't hate my drugs. <laughs> That's if the, the, uh, sorry. Uh, Ethan, why can't you just leave? Why can't you just not 
do this job. Um, I think that you, uh, like, God, I mean, do they just exile you into space, like, uh, to fend for yourself? Um, like, you can only live in the, the last bastion if, you know, if you do as they say. So basically, you have nowhere else to go. Right. Like, maybe there are other places to go, but we don't know about them. Okay. They're not going to tell us. They, they, <laughs> they tell you there's no other place to go. <laughs> right. And they, they put you on that. Yeah. On so, that like... Ship we live on a spaceship there's nowhere to go from there except right. like and and then the the last bastion there's nowhere to go from there it's it's pretty hard to like literally escape i i like it a little logan's run scenario there uh Can we add some elements of gilded cages i kind of like the idea of along with the lies and propaganda we get to live a somewhat more privileged life yeah that makes sense i think that yeah. leans in with the like drugs and addiction as well like feeding into vices feeding into baser wants to keep us unquestioning or at least unwilling to cut those cords you also have being on the spaceship you have experienced not having the alien mind god that's in your probably head. That, like the spaceship is the gilded cage and it's just it's freedom from this alien god mm -hmm. oh yeah okay i like that uh that is a good call tyler uh patrick uh what is your reputation hmm so yeah, there's that that idea of the the gilded cage of freedom, and I I'm really interested by I know later down in the list is our transgressions. Um, so I think it's it's a bit of cursed warriors and a lot more of monsters in our own right. Um, that, that, you know, we've become something, something other, something between human and these Leviathans and, and. Have you actually all... become, or is this the reputation that you have? Like, like the, we're kind of moving into the, the second part of that question. So what is the, what is the reputation how do people perceive you and then how much is that true i i think there there are changes from the the infusion from the bastion god this weird like alien biology i do think there and it's it's unpredictable how it how it will express uh, because we don't study this tech, we don't refine it. We just go with what works and what's powerful. Okay. Um, but I, I, I think there is this uh, idea in the broader culture that we are these like uh, perfect and almost noble cursed warriors. Like we will bury, we will you know, bear the crosses of this civilization. We will take on these horrible things that happen to us willingly and we accept it all and we're very, like, serene and stoic about it. And I mean, we're, you, we're teenagers. Right. There's nothing further from the truth. So you are used for for lies and reputation. It's part of that propaganda. Yeah, the propaganda back home. Yeah, okay. we, are, we are the perfect sacrifices. We are the unquestioning victims. I like it. Tyler, our flagship. What what is it like? I have some examples there. 
but as a nautical fellow yourself. And and as a as a lover of history, I I got to go with the last Leviathan hunter. A class of ships built to do this to fight this war, uh, uh, and this is is the very last surviving one that that remains. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you have a name for it? <laughs> the Bellerophon. The Bellerophon, okay. <laughs> but I think it's it's the last of these Leviathan hunters, and it very well be maybe like the last of what could truly be called our tech. Okay. So it was built before a lot of things and and since so the 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 chassis the 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 frame of it still looks like a classic human ship. It's only once we get inside and we see how things have been repurposed and added to it uh, there's that that we we see the 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 break in that. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, I like that very much. Uh, so we're going to talk about our engines now. These are the mecha that we have. These are as I say, semi sentient combat mechs each unique from the others. Uh, you'll get to kind of describe what they look like. They don't have to be uniform in design here. Uh, and in a bit, each of you is going to make up one of these engines uh, and someone else is going to fly it. Uh, so uh, that's one of the the, the tweaks here. Uh, Sherry, why can't we build more engines? Um, these are actually entities that are tied to the ancient god. Uh, their their thing they are like what might be considered their knights, the knights. Ooh. And when you say the ancient god, you mean the ancient god of the last bastion, that mm -hmm. alien god. Exactly. Okay. Knights, angels of that alien exactly. god. Okay. Agents. Okay. Ethan, what? do these engines yearn for? What is it that they want? Um, See, they were okay. They're the agents of this alien god, presumably created while it was still like alive and active. Uh, so, uh, they want to. They want to explore. Ooh, interesting. I like that. Not the answer I was expecting. Uh, uh, I like that. So these things want to explore to see new things in this universe that they've never been in that they've been called into yeah uh, they were i think created as like scouts okay originally i like it there's a a thing like that in uh planetary uh with uh, uh space angels that are sent as scouts uh to to just pick up the flow of information uh patrick uh any thoughts on a naming convention for what what names they are given uh, so I, I'm really drawn to the idea of the names of collapsed stars of black holes. And unfortunately, the way that we name black holes really lets me down. But uh, I, I think the, the names of collapsed stars. Okay. So that's what they are. We can kind of come up with anything that we, we want within that, but that's what yeah, they're representing. 98% of what we name black holes is a series of letters and numbers. And that's yeah. not very evocative, but stellar names. And then we say that they're dead, comma. 
you know. <laughs> Maybe when they came through, every one of them had to collapse a star to enter into this world. I, I think that's part of, only a small part of <laughs> why we can't make more. <laughs> uh, so Transcendence is the state where our characters go into a heightened emotional state they kind of go into their personal mental overdrive it's a mechanical state in this but it's also you know a a thing that we could concretely talk about uh and so how do you think tyler when someone goes into that transcendence how does that affect the engines do they just get faster is there a physical transformation is there something else Do they um, sing? Ooh, that's that's kind of cool. Um, I think there is some a physical transformation. Um and not knowing as much about you know, not knowing as much of what it's really gonna do in the game. I think I'm gonna say that uh, it's one of these it's that opportunity where we're most melded. Okay. And so I think the engines take on some of the appearance of of us Ooh. interesting all like right the the more we sync up the the more organic they look and the less mechanical or whatever like the less generic and the more like us and like us individually yeah, yeah. And when you're trying to transcend you you can clearly see that it is your or mm. engine. Okay. Uh, I like that. Uh, so we are each going to add an engine to the hangar. Uh, uh, and uh, for that, you're going to give it a name. We're going to ask you for a, a kind of a general description of it, how you picture it. And then you're going to choose one virtue. And there's a list of example virtues there on the hangar sheet we're back in the character keeper on the engines and flagship sheet uh when a pilot's actions align with their engine's virtue they you get a you get a bonus dice so this is one of the ways to get bonus dice uh and then you also will choose an engine impulse uh when the pilot's actions align with the engine's impulse or they accept a poison promise based on the impulse they mark xp uh, and that action doesn't deplete their transcendence track, which is a whole whole nother mechanism. So you're going to do that. And uh, then we're going to ask you a, a question about why your character can't pilot this particular engine. Sherry. You are muted. The name? Uh, that seems very hard. I gotta look up these collapsed stars. So huh? all right, Google. They're gonna be they're gonna be very, very off. Like I like I said, trying to find the names of actual black holes will not help you. Just look up names of stars and then tell us that it's collapsed. Okay. <laughs> oh shoot. Not right now. All right, so star names, sorry. Sure. Oh, Beetlejuice. Um, let's see, list of proper names of stars. Come on, just give me the list. All right, there we go. Uh, 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 how about Lyra? Uh, it's the, the talons of a swooping eagle. That's okay. what the name means. And then... Put that in hair one. Yeah. And then I think that we will give it... Fierce. Okay. Fierce is your virtue. And it's impulse. Hungry. Okay. Fierce and hungry. Okay. 
And I'll have to put that name there. Uh, Ethan. Oh, actually, let me stop you before we do that. So, Sherry, what does this look like? Like, what does this, uh, 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 what, what appearance does it have? Oh, that's an interesting idea. And, and what was the name you gave us? It was Lyra, L-Y-R-A. Okay. Um, and uh, I think that what it looks like is uh, when you approach it, um, it, um, it, now how big are these? Let's get that sense of like. How big are these? How big is, is Lyra? Okay. So I we've think. Got, we've got sort of the range of classic heavy gear, you know, uh, yeah. a guy in a, in a, in a bigger mech suit uh, up to, you know, uh, Evangelion, uh, you're in a capsule. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, in, in, in the thing. thing or or somewhere in the middle yeah i like the capsule idea okay like the, so these are almost, big these are big these okay. are like what five six stories tall yeah um that way we can have catwalks and have you walk past the heads and stuff in various it, shots exactly that's very important um and i think that lyra is is striking because lyra um when they're not flying they look like uh it's a, a big golden ball in a frame uh, that's sort of shaped like maybe like a harp. Hey. Um, and then the ball is suspended within that by these cables that like switch places. Like they're always moving. It's actually like some sort of energy connection that's just always moving and the capsule inside is always moving. So like no, the spots are not touched very, very long, very often. There's like some sense of like that thing in the middle is super precious, but it has to be held up. Interesting. I, I, I like that. The, the whole sense of this is its representation in this space. Uh, why can't you pilot Lyra? Uh, because Lyra, literally, when I get near, wants to eat me. Okay. Is, does that make any sense? Yeah. That is. I like that. Okay. Now, Ethan, I apologize for, for starting and stopping there. Uh, what is the name of your engine that you're creating for us? Oh, I'm going to be super basic here. Uh uh it's a pegasus okay and uh it's it is it is elegant but principled interesting and what is the reason that you cannot pilot it it doesn't like me Okay. Like it is clear and obvious. It just it does not want me. <laughs> okay. Uh like I think anytime I even get close to it, I just, you know, uh whatever connection we have built into ourselves to these engines, just like I think it feels very unpleasant just to be anywhere near it. Ooh, I like that. Uh and that and did you describe it for us? Just, yeah, I did not. Um, I think it is like when when not being piloted. It's it's picturing something like sleek and silver. Uh, no um like no hard angles it's all like curved um and like streamlined it looks like it 
trying to think of what of an example. It, it looks like, you know, sort of a, a what, what a 1950s, you know, futuristic idea of a mech would be. Okay. Nice. Patrick. Um, let's see, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go extra goth, uh, uh, chair on. Okay. Um, let's see, virtue and impulse. Hmm. I think serene and morbid. Serene and morbid. Interesting. What what does Charon look like? Um <clears throat> I think it's very like dark, almost black, but more like you know, ultraviolet nebulas sort of colors uh, through it. Uh, and I, I'm imagining a, a, a shape sort of like um, Cloak from Marvel Comics, Cloak and Dagger. Yeah. Um, that, that idea of like a hidden form underneath this flaring umbra around it. I think when it's when it's in transcendence and it's sort of like highest power points, there's like an eclipse shine around it. Why can't your pilot uh, work with this engine? Um, I, I I think any time he spends any any amount of time with it, uh, he just starts crying, doesn't stop. That uh, un uncontrollable sadness. Tyler, what is the name of your engine that you are creating for us? I am making Regulus. The Lion Star. And the virtue is wise. Okay. And you got me. I've been flipping back and forth between tabs, and they are definitely listed one column to the right, aren't they? Right there on the character keeper. Yeah. Lies and imperious. Imperious. And what does Regulus look like? He is, or it is, the full-on Warhammer gilded gothic all sorts of adornment um kind of that baroque sort of everything on it excellent uh over the top uh why are you incompatible with regulus it doesn't exist in my timeline i've never heard of it it never was there and I have trouble even seeing, even recognizing that it's there, and it has trouble recognizing that I'm here. Ooh, I like that. So, there are some final questions, and some of them we've already kind of answered. The the our transgressions. How do we transgress against that which is sacred? I think we fully established how our civilization transgress transgresses against a, a sort of uh, a sacredness of respect for the, the gods, this, this, the way that it moves out and 
uh, uh, de destroys and co-ops. Uh, but the question is, with this, humanity kind of turned its back on something. Uh, so what is it that we think our players, our characters are bringing to the table that maybe reflects that they have another way or they have an option uh, apart from this kind of violation of of the the bodies of the divine any thoughts on that let me put this as an open question here well because I, I, yeah. I also read these questions very much as like how do we the pilots transgress against the current culture um, and I, I think we, you know, we've talked about it several times, but that idea of being able to live free of that emotional weight, <laughs> like we, we, we probably wear some of it when we go into battle with the engines, but we don't have to live under the bastion's sway all the time. That, that emotions, the, the, the value of self-control that self-control won't kind of won't help you with the engines in some ways you have to, 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 to give in. Okay. I like that. Uh, so what hope do you think you have uh, against Leviathans? I think that's a question we're going to kind of sit on for a bit. I think we may come back to that one. But right now, uh, let's, for our last bit here, I want us to make up our characters and do, do the character building process here. Uh, you've each chosen your playbook. Uh, and uh, I think that it... Uh, so what... Da, 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 da. Theory sheet. Uh, oh, uh, yeah. And then after we do that, we'll choose our series ability and our transcendent ability. Uh, so, but for there's your something very important. No one has created a place for the character pictures on the sheets. Yes, we will have to redo that to, to yes. add those in. And, Patrick, and I may have to call upon your supreme skills in those uh, things that that's so true. And and here I was going to co actually compliment this character keeper for how beautiful and how close to the uh, actual sheets it is, but no space for a picture is a fatal flaw. It is a fatal flaw. Beyond fatal, just rendering it almost useless and, to me. And we need so many pictures. Like there's us, there's transcendent us, there, there's, there's our an Mac, NPC there's tab. all sorts yes. of stuff. Uh, so uh, This is just terrible. To, yeah. <laughs> so you're going to recall core of your role and your background. You're going to detail your obligation. Uh, 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 so are, are, are your obligation are mecha pilots here, uh, is your obligation yeah, part of the military? Yes, okay. Uh, you are going to assign action ratings, and that's a lie when it says ratings because what you're going to do is your book will have two action ratings at one. And you get to choose a third different action and give it a rating of one. And then you're done assigning your stats. That is what happens. Okay. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just sit with that for a minute. And it isn't like our mechs have some abilities. And if you are in when... tune with the mech doing your action in tune with the the engine's virtue, then you get an extra die. Basically, I can promise you there are two uh, series abilities that we're going to start with. Yes, okay, where well, we get two more dots, <laughs> just so we can limp along. <laughs> yeah, we, we get a, we, get, we can get, we can get four more dots from oh. choosing those two abilities. Oh, oh. Yeah. I'm going to hide some sheets here. All right. All right, I'm I'm already overwhelmed because I can't do a name if I don't have a picture. Oh, okay. So I've got a picture, I think.
I suspect what we will do is we will take that middle column and we will move it down to, to give us space for at least two, two picture boxes up there. I will take care of that between this session and next. Okay. So Sherry doesn't get the vapors. It's just, <laughs> do we have a sheet? Well, we can put our pictures in the NPC sheet then on yes. the top row at least. Absolutely.
Uh, and as uh, mentioned, you'll get one special ability from the top. You get the one that's sort of listed at the, the top of the thing, and then you'll choose another one. And then you will also get a transcendent ability from the set that are down below. So you should pick one from each. And Ethan, if you need to uh, look at the transcendent abilities on the other sheets, feel free to to pull those up. Yeah. So uh, uh, I, I was just going to say, I don't know if uh, I'm the only one that was this slow, but it took me this long to figure out that if you type X into any of the squares, then that's what checks it and changes the color, like oh, the abilities okay. and the 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 action ratings and stuff. I, I did a copy paste and right before the format changed I saw that it typed an X in there I was like oh <laughs> clever clever I was wondering why none of them were checkboxes <laughs> that's actually a good way to get around though it is a way that it's those rules things that could break but I like that I put some series possible names in the chat there for folks. Mm. I think one and three are really strong. I like three because it's a sort of like translation and take a part of Deus Ex Machina. Mm-hmm. Other people's thoughts? I'm good with Divine like Engines. The... Tyler? Yeah, I like Divine Engines as well. Okay. Uh, Ethan, are you okay with that? 
Um, I was going to say one, but I'll go with the consensus. Okay. Uh, let's do this. Let's take uh, our our quick five bio break. We have one quick thing is what is the difference between the mundane name and the true name? Like, I think the true name is sort of like you're when you're name? transcendent, when you're magic girl transformed, when you're what maybe what your code name is as a pilot. Yeah, I think that's that's a good way to, to, to look at it. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's take a quick five. We'll come back. Uh, and then we'll uh, go through to do some introductions here. So, uh, Tyler, uh, you're the time traveler, and uh, the time traveler comes first in our tabs here. So what you ought to do is, is move those over when you see that happen. But Yeah, I was no, click into that one. No, I do not want to be the first time. So, tell us your character's names and pronouns and kind of how you are picturing them well like sherry i'm looking for a picture and haven't found one yet um but uh my my mundane name is octavius uh my true name is terminus my role is forbidden lover my background is failed savior my obligation is mecha pilot and military. Um, I I haven't come up with a complete. I, I'll have to find a picture for it. Sure, get a sure. Good idea. Right, right, right. I mean, we're all teens. He is. He is. He. Uh, he. Him pronouns. Okay. Um, I'm kind of imagining that he his fashion is a little off. Okay. Um, just in that kind of, he's a little from the future, but it's not something that's super noticeable, and he still kind of hangs on to a little of that when he, now that he's here. Um, let's see. I took, I have faded, which is, um, I traveled through time to change another protagonist's fate. What dark fate? Are you here to prevent and whose fate is it? And I also have picked up Oracle. You can perceive the myriad timelines leading from past to future. When you gather info, gain plus one effect level, which is nice. <clears throat> if it relates to your fated person, take plus one uh, D as well. And my transcendent ability is on the other side of time. When you push yourself, choose one of the following additional benefits. You trade places with your fated person. You briefly remove an ally or foe from the flow of time. Nice. And I took up my defy. Now, did you say who you are here to save? I have not. Okay. Well, let's let everybody introduce themselves. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we'll do that. Uh, we're going to have everybody introduce their characters. And then after that, we're going to do secondary characters and we're going to do promises, which I'll talk about what that looks like here. That's another XP trigger. Uh, Sherry, uh, uh, tell us about your character, names, pronouns, who you imagine them as. You are muted. Uh, their name is... Manon, Manon Stone of Ursus Nine Cathedral. Um, and so uh, their true name is uh, Chevalier Ace. Ace means female knight. Okay. Um, ace pilot, naive idealist, very much. Dutiful servant of the cathedral, now gone. Um, definitely raised in that to, to with a sense of needing to sacrifice, needing to serve, needing to... Um, go out and do the things that must be done uh, for those things, uh, for them, for what is right. Okay. Um, let's see here. I chose uh, 
my main guardian skill, if we want to talk about that, is honor bound. I live mm -hmm. by a code. My code forbids all but one of the following. Um, violence, lying, asking for help. Um, but it does allow me to admit fault. So okay. I chose that as the exception. So I will not ask for help. I will not lie. And I will not do violence um, to se. another person. To I think we're going to like, like yeah. we're going to define that that exactly. way. Exactly. I was okay. hoping it would be that it would be kind of hard if I couldn't strike against these monstrosities. Right. Um, that, I, that's, that's so brilliant and simple. You saw a way through that impossible block in the playbook that I could not think around. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, and uh, the transcendent ability? You're well, and it was at the end of the mission, uh, if I did not violate my code, I get to mark XP. If none of the protagonists broke my code, we mark series XP, just so you know. So, like, we can have drama, but we can also choose to not have drama with teeth gritted and get some XP. Um, so, in the sense of, or we had different drama. Uh, but, and then there's, uh, I chose the ability watchful, which means when I protect an ally, I take plus one die to add my risk to my resistance roll. When I gather info to anticipate possible threats in the current situation, I gain plus one effect level. And my transcendence, um, I went to market and I forgot the X thing. So now I'm doing the X is how dare you. Uh, when you strike against someone who has harmed one of my friends, gain plus one effect. Um, if my action succeeds, I recover stress. So um, once our enemies have hit someone, boy, I get really effective. So okay. there you go. Uh, I like it. All right. Uh, oh, uh, I haven't don't... chosen my dot, though. What are the stars things? Analyze, conceal, flow. Uh, search below the surface. Uh, hide your true intentions. Uh, move with grace and adapt to your circumstances. I think I'm going to take a dot in, I mean, a X in flow. Okay. There we go. <laughs> that gives you a, a one resistance uh, in each in of those. Each thing, it gets yeah. mighty at this stage. <laughs> mighty, I tell you. <laughs> uh, and uh, that brings us to Patrick. Um, so I'm doing the Enigma, uh, and my mundane name, <laughs> my mundane name is, uh, Sia. Uh, my parents named me Theseus, but that's entirely too embarrassing. So it's Sia, please. Okay. Um, and he, I think he, he joined, uh, with the, the flagship, um, and with the, the military organization here because he is good at the mechanics that, that he works on, but his, he's uh, an artist, uh, um, uh, he draws, and I think the, the idea of making a natural history of the dead, uh, making a, a, a study of the Leviathans and their ilk is something that like he couldn't pass up the chance for. So he came out here uh, or was, you know, was, was training up totally unsuited towards the sort of like violent or, or hierarchical aspects of military life. Um, but in some attack that was like right outside the last bastion uh he was he was down inside the god he was in the the mechanics areas and an engine that had previously died uh came to life and and bonded with him um and he since he was inside the bastion it went through a sort of like accidental unintentional the the bonding ceremony and the change and all of that and i think part of the the alien change to him uh the godly change whatever to him uh is that sia like he he knew that that he could not pilot this he couldn't go into battle like he has a lot of anxiety and self-doubt problems and knew that that he he would fail and so he had to like pretend that he was someone that he could handle this he had to pretend that he was 
this like propaganda hero that they talk about and something in that changing process made a sort of separate voice in his head another person that lives in there with him that is someone very different like i'm not i'm not trying to to say this is actual mental illness real sort of disorders this is something very metaphysical and strange but it is and it's that's my true name that's radiant okay. radiant is someone who can handle this radiant is someone who is perfect and calm and and uh experienced out in the middle of violence and chaos and radiant can uh do this um and with my abilities i took uh Shrouded in secrets, no one can unmask you without your permission. Uh, and there's the, the base enigma thing behind the mask. Your transcendent and mundane selves lead separate lives, and no one knows that they're the same person. Your transcendent self wears a mask. And so I'm sort of playing with the idea of secrets and openness. Um, in that battle, it was a it was a very dramatic last minute thing. Like this dead engine rises up out of Bastion, helps wins the fight, and there is this pilot radiant that they have to accept. You know, brought this this thing came back to life. This lost limited resource. Okay, it's bonded with this person. We have to accept this person, but no one can quite figure out who radiant is or where they go or how they get to where they get once you know battle starts or when the smoke clears at the end of it um and sia is like desperately trying to keep that secret and and live these two different people that live in his head so there is this thing where uh, we have on, on the ship that they accept that there is a mysterious pilot that appears when they need uh tuxedo mask style. Uh, yeah. uh, and, and, pilots... and, and that's, that's my transcendent ability is the big reveal. The moment you transcend, you may choose to immediately disappear and reappear at any time in the place of your choosing. So it's the full on tuxedo mask. Okay. I like it. Uh, all right. Uh, last but not least, that brings us to our unlikely hero. Uh, yeah. Um, so the thing about the unlikely hero is that you can't transcend. <laughs> so I don't have to pick that. Um, I'm not going through right now. Like there's a way to eventually, but uh, I'll pick it when I get there, I guess. Um, yeah. uh, so the, uh, they're, my name is Zavi. I don't think they have a like there there's no transcendent name um because you know uh uh they are a rejected candidate and inferior replacement. Um I think what happened is that like at some point they decided to like uh apply for uh whatever the mecha pilot you know position is. Um were you know able to uh pilot you know one of the mechs but not as well as someone else that person was chosen that person has since been killed uh they went back through their records and like oh well there's this one person who could do it um not as well as the person we chose but last resort <laughs> uh and so they called this person like hey guess what you you know the form you signed five years ago <laughs> <laughs> the fine prince says we can still drag you back even if you have like gone on to do something completely different and they did and that they like uh kind of what you know like I said they went off to college and uh studied something more interesting and it came to like be glad that they had not gotten into the military mm -hmm. <laughs> and are now being dragged back and are not entirely happy about it at all like uh so my um ability uh, uh aside from uh, as only mortal you cannot transcend you cannot have special armor uh but you do get an additional action during downtime and roll a roll uh plus one d when rolling to make a connection okay. um and then if if we get the point where 
only I can save one of my friends from fatal harm or severe consequences, and I do it, then I can uh, gain hero's destiny and allow me to transcend. Uh, uh, I also picked uh, worth saving when I run foolishly into danger and no one helps me. <laughs> um, I get to mark XP. <laughs> But if they do help me, they get uh, plus one. To... Now, I do have a question. Uh, uh, does the book, do you get two regular abilities since you're not getting a transcendent one? I don't think so, but uh, I, I, mean, I didn't see uh, anything uh, about uh, that. I, I think you should take two regular abilities. Okay. Uh, to, to, to start and then uh All right. because uh you're going to be throwing away one to get the transcendent ability later on so uh, uh, otherwise you're really shortchanging you so if you want to pick another well, one well once uh once they hit their transcendent once they do the hero's destiny they immediately will get one for free yeah but they lose only mortal in the process and only mortal is oh, a that's strong true. ability yeah yeah that's true okay uh all right, cool. Let's see which one do I want. Um, I think that's a good call. Yeah, it just makes sense, especially given the the the, the skeletal characters we're working with. Yeah, yeah, and and I definitely I think like you know, as difficult as it seems to be, the only one that can save someone from fatal consequences and go in and do it like once you you get to the point where you you want to do that, we should all work to make that happen. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be hard when you get around to it. Yeah. Oh, this is cool. Okay, I'll 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 pick this one. Uh, yeah, links on my sheet and links with me on other player sheets can be spent to affect any character. Nice. Oh, wow. wild. That's, that is, uh, we watch all me need to be pals with you ever a use lot. That. <laughs> cool. Okay. I imagine it's you going. Oh, oh, Sam, <laughs> Sam Tyler, Sam Patrick. You know, so I'm trying to these names. These new names. Don't worry about me. <laughs> Uh, all right. Uh, so we've got uh, a couple of things that I'm not going to. I think I want to stop here because this is stuff that, that I, I think we need to chew on for a bit. Uh, Do we want to look at the series abilities? Oh yeah, let's let's decide that. And then the two things I'm going to have you think about that we're going to do next time at the start of next time are uh, secondary characters. And promises and promises are are essentially the the kind of the relationship questions. But I don't want to do it kind of this late in the thing uh, after we've get, gotten so much information <laughs> for our, our 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 characters here. So, uh, uh, inches and flagship, uh, we've got that. So let's look at the series sheet. You get one series ability and one transcendent ability. Uh, Let me throw out a pitch. <laughs> if we take Academy Trained, the first series ability, we'll all get to add one action dot to either Perceive, Flow, or Analyze. If we take Plugged In, the first transcendent ability, we all get to add a transcendent dot, i.e. in the third spot, and only available when you're transcendent, to Perceive, Flow, and Analyze. So between those two abilities, that would be four dots added. Three of those dots would only be available when you're transcended, but that's what the game's about. What it's, do you there, all it's a think? basic choice, but it's it's something that may it's be really strong. necessary. Yeah. yeah. Are, are you all okay with that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Uh, so everybody choose one from perceive, flow, or analyze to uh, add another dot into and then you'll add another dot in the third spot for perceive flow and analyze if that's your only dot uh, uh in that thing it doesn't count towards your resistance total that's why it's done in the third slot even when you're transcendent it it uh I don't know if it's even when you're transcendent, but I know it says if it's your only dot, it makes specific mention of that. Interesting. Yeah. Can I at least ask around something real quick? Um, yeah. 
who might be interested in being my fated protagonist? Um, my sort of it's I come back to, to the past because that's a person who I've seen some things going to happen and they're important. I want to kind of link it with my forbidden love sort of thing. Of I think it's someone that I cared for very deeply. They died, or something terrible happened. I don't know if they died. Something terrible happened, and as we're all supposed to be coming from somewhere that has been taken by the taken by the Leviathans, I think I came from Bastion in my alternate world. Oh, interesting. And so I got, I was managed somehow to be sent back or sent to this timeline, however you want to perceive it, um, to try to save that person. Anybody interested in that? It's just a downfall or a terrible mistake. That's that that, that, that timeline great, did. Yeah, and, and so it's a great great stick for all three of these characters because yeah. in mm -hmm. some ways they're all like uh, really different you know the unlikely hero is is awesome right. in way. I, and, yeah. then, and then the enigma no one knows how it's working he's got the split all of those things and, yeah i'm, and I'm then, very much into leaning into the like questionability and potential danger of this other voice in their head of like that could turn dark one day i could definitely see that yep. um so I, I you could you could do a random i'm i'm would be interested in it i have no problem with that i assume you would be patrick i don't know yeah anyone would uh, say no ethan, I, would I could you see it working and i'd that. be interested in it okay mm -hmm. ethan would you rather not be or is that something you'd be interested in I, I I'd be interested in it. Uh, I, I'm not sure it makes <laughs> as much sense as I like. Just off the top of my head, I would say that uh, Patrick's character makes the most sense, but any of them could, yeah, could work. Well, see, I, I honestly yours, I kind of I I think I'm a true on since I just wanted to clear if people yeah. would be interested. Well, but I'll tell you, there's something to yours and the potential of the uh of of the hero you know down here now that you're going to ascend That's, sort of thing the, the unlikely hero i could see being more of a tragic future rather than a dark future mm. but let me chew on it i just wanted to make sure that there was you know that people might be interested with what i'm sort of envisioning i don't want to push on anybody especially since there's at the very least, a kind of unrequited love aspect and perhaps a, you know, that that idea of the, the one that I love, but you're not really that person, but you are, sort of thing. Mm -hmm. I thought that, that person from another yeah. timeline. That, that actually is interesting. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. So, as, as I said, uh, between now and next time, uh, take a look at how uh the book uh uh talks about what the promises are uh if you don't have a, a copy of the pdf I'll, I'll i'll share that particular section with you about creating characters uh and you're going to think of two secondary characters uh these will probably be people that are on the ship since that's where you're going to be interacting with most they can be family members they can be friends they can be rivals they can be mentors uh they're, they're going to allow you to kind of build up the picture of the world that you're in if you want to you feel free to uh between now and then find a picture and put them in the mpc tab and and all of that and then you can t uh, tell us about them next time i have a question i have an answer could there be a second team of pilots like there's two teams they're kind of rivals would that be a thing? If that's what you want, then yeah. I, I yeah, I, out I, there. I, I like the idea of there being more pilots than us. It shouldn't be too many because some of the later missions are going out and finding even more lost engines. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, at least another squad. I we think shouldn't would be, be very the cool. only engines. Yeah. 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 Let, let, let's say that there's another squad 
uh, that that is may- maybe deliberately kept, you know, uh, uh, as competitive rivals, different name, that kind of thing. I like yes. that. Okay. Uh, so I am going to stop the recording. <laughs>